guys and welcome back to the teacher made channel where everything is made by a teacher my name is Shannon and I am a licensed special education teacher working with grades preschool through 12th grade if you are new here please go ahead and click that like button and also subscribe to this channel and also please 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 drop down in the description box for my blog for more available resources Today on our SPED Talks, we are going to talk about how to help a child with schizophrenia inside your classroom, and these also can be implemented at home. Let's just jump right into it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to modify the curriculum for these students. And what I mean by that is maybe you have um, a math sheet and there's about 30 problems on there. What you wanna do is you want to give the students half of that sheet. So instead of giving the whole 30, maybe you should try giving 15 of the math problems. And what this will do is it'll cut down on the stress and not cause them to have, you know, a, a outburst or throw a tantrum. Um, because you know, students with schizophrenia, they do stress a lot. And sometimes they can have an outburst or they can make up things. And, you know, they, these children do sometimes have hallucinations and illusions. So you want to make sure that you're making it less stress as possible. That's why I said you want to make sure you want to modify the curriculum. And whatever you're doing at home, whatever tasks you're giving them at home, try to modify it so that they're not doing so many things all at once so that way they won't put it inside their hair like oh my gosh i have to do all these different things and then they're just their mind is just all over the place so let's let's just not do that uh number two is a quiet environment um my student i have i have three students in the past who had this um mental disorder so what I have learned is to always have a quiet environment. And I know sometimes that's hard um, when you're working as a classroom teacher or if you are a parent at home, but you wanna make sure that you try to have at least a quiet space in the child's room. Uh, I do have a blog post down in the description box of how you can create a sensory room for these children or any other child that has a sensory processing disorder. So you wanna make sure you try to include a quiet environment. And me as a person, I like a quiet environment. So it was very easy for me to implement this intervention inside my classroom. Number three, one of my favorite accommodations is preferential seating. Um, all my three students, I had them sitting close to me. That way I had my eyes on them at all times. You want to make sure that they are not distracted by others around them because sometimes that can also cause them to have an outburst and um, get in their modes or whatever mood that they may have. Also, you want to make sure that you are putting them next to students that are not going to trigger them to have an episode or have an outburst. Um, number four, extra time to complete tasks. So these students require a lot of extra time on quizzes and tests. So I made sure that I gave my student a lot of extra time on their tests or even in any assignment that they're working on. Make sure you give them extra time to finish it. Uh, when they're at home doing their homework, please do not rush. These children, give them extra time to complete the assignment and the homework because the way they're thinking is it it requires a lot to a lot of mental thinking and they don't you know it takes them longer to complete certain assignments because it's very challenging for them like the one student i had it was very very challenging for them so i gave like i said i modified the work for them so instead of giving them all the work i gave them half of the work number five so you want to do note taking for this student maybe give the notes in advance or have them do a graphic organizer. You can also write that as a accommodation in their IEP, or you can make sure that you have, you can have a, a peer buddy, a student who takes the notes for them or kind of helps them with the notes. And this helps them with staying organized so they won't get into a frantic mode, okay? Number six, six let's set realistic expectations. And this is for any child, even as us as adults, we wanna make sure that we are setting realistic expectations for our students and our children because 
If you are giving them a goal that's all the way up here and they're like mid here mentally or just um, their motivation is here and the goal is all the way up there, nine times out of 10, they are not going to meet that goal. So let's try giving them goals that are very realistic inside the classroom and also some goals that you probably do at home that are so very realistic that you can do for them to meet at home as well. Number seven, you wanna be very flexible with your assignments. Um, as a teacher, you wanna be very flexible with your assignment. Maybe they are late with turning in the assignment or maybe they didn't finish the assignment within the hour block that, were, that was given to them. You wanna make sure that you're very flexible but you want to make sure you pick and choose your own battles because if you start doing the flexibility a lot, then they're going to go on thinking in adulthood that they, hey, everything's always going to be flexible and it's not. So like I said, use that intervention or tip to your discretion. Number eight, and this goes back to the one I said earlier, you may want to make sure you want to try and do a peer buddy. Not all students with schizophrenia require a peer buddy, but some do. And I think this is great because it has a positive interaction between the two people. And it also helps them to build a positive uh, community and a relationship with one another. And it also helps them to build a relationship with the whole entire classroom. So you want to make sure you do a peer buddy. Maybe they can help them with their work sometimes um even during when they go to their related arts or specials maybe they can sit next to them in class and show them and model to them hey you know this is how we do things inside the classroom remember are you setting good goals for yourself then number nine so you want to make sure you have a small class setting some of these students are found in small class settings but if they are in a large class setting then you want to make sure that you're working in small groups so this student doesn't, like I said, have an you know episode or go into frantic mode because there's all many things going on in the classroom and it might be related to a sensory overload or they may just have be overwhelmed with all the work that's piled down on top onto them. So you want to make sure you have, if, if you cannot put them in a small class setting, then if they're going to be in a large classroom, try to... If you are a teacher, try to work in small groups, or if you are a parent, try to add small group as an accommodation on their IEP. And the final one, number 10, is schedules and routines. So for my kindergartner who had schizophrenia, I always make sure I had a schedule for them to know what was coming next. That way they wouldn't put all this these things inside their mind of, of what they need to do or what they should expect. So these are some tips of how to help a child with schizophrenia at home or at school. Please click the like button. Also subscribe to this channel and I'm going to drop down in the comments some more resources for how to help a child with schizophrenia. Bye guys.